It's been a big faith builder for me. It was not something I ever anticipated doing. If you had told me I would help start a Christian school 27 years ago, I mean the day before the pastor, my pastor mentioned it to me, it, it was not on my radar at all. Well, I first became aware of it that there was a group trying to start a non-denominational Christian school in the Quad Cities when my pastor told me that there was a group, a small group of pastors who had gotten together and thought that the Quad Cities would support a school that was not associated with one particular church. He said he fully supported it, but he didn't have time to go to the meetings, so would I go and see what was going on. I think the reason my pastor asked my husband and I to sort of get going in this is that we had taken our two boys out of public school. We were uh, becoming aware that um, we as parents were responsible for the education of our children and that public school education maybe wasn't the neutral uh, worldview place that some of us had thought that it was. So I started attending some meetings and I'm sure this was in probably early 1993 and there were there was a core group of uh, people who were interested in starting a school. Uh, but we kind of didn't know how much interest there was in the community. So the first thing that I remember um, was that we held a public meeting. It was sort of testing the waters to see what the interest level would be. Um, and the meeting was well attended, but nothing really happened until probably the fall of 93 when Bettendorf Christian Church said, hey, we would be interested in letting you use our building to get started. That was in November and I think in January, Chris Hardy, who was another one of the founding board members and I, came to a congregational meeting in this building, which at that time was the Bettendorf Christian Church, and we explained what our vision was for this non-denominational Christian school where students would be able to think critically with the Bible as the basis of their foundation of truth. Well, we spoke a little bit about it, and they took a congregational vote, and it was unanimous that we could begin here. And we thought, wow, this is, this is pretty great, because how many times does a church congregation <laughs> vote unanimously for anything? I think we started with 31 students. And the first classroom we used is what is now the library downstairs. That was our preschool room. And we had access to the big, uh, the big room that's now the lunchroom. So the Monday after Labor Day, uh, 1994, was our first day of school and Morningstar Academy opened its doors. <music> our students to be good thinkers. We did not know about the title classical Christian education or even that that was a thing. <laughs> but we knew we wanted them to be thinkers. We knew we wanted them to use the Bible as their basis for truth. We kept kind of saying that, but in our meetings we would talk about, well, what does that look like? We can't just say we are against this or that. We have to be for something, and what is it we're going to be for, and how is it that we are going to demonstrate that? What we didn't know was that there were a lot of other schools in the nation that had started within the previous decade, and they were following a model called classical Christian education, which revived the trivium, which is something that started way back in the Middle Ages, um, in a sort of the way uh, people were educated in the early years of this country. But how we found out about it was, I clearly remember there was a board meeting when one of our board members brought a, a copy of World Magazine, an issue of World Magazine, to the meeting. And in this magazine, it was talking about classical Christian education. There was a small school out in Moscow, Idaho, uh, called Logos School, and um, they had started a classical Christian school a few years before based on the trivium, which means three ways, grammar, logic, and rhetoric, and it fits well with the way children are designed to learn. And this school was teaching logic, and the students were learning Latin, and all of these things came together to produce a student who um, had a great depth of knowledge, 
was able to think logically and clearly and evaluate arguments and then was able to persuasively speak and write and so to present ideas and discuss ideas thoughtfully and the lights went on for all of us and it was Eureka, we found it. There's other schools that are farther down the road than we are. We can learn from them. And there was an association that had started just a few years before, the Association of Classical and Christian Schools. So we immediately uh, started doing more investigating. We sent a teacher to Moscow to take some training. Uh, some of us started attending the, the national conferences of the ACCS, where we learned about curriculum and just grew in our understanding of what this meant and how it looked you know, day to day in the classroom. History is not taught separate from the theology and literature is not taught separately from history. And um, in science and math, you're looking at how God created the world and the systems that hold that together. So I think it's easier to remember for students because it just makes sense. It gives them, it's like reading a book from the beginning to the end instead of opening a book up and being asked to start in the middle. And you don't know what came before and you don't know what came after. So, you know, in that, if you're doing that, it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense and you don't remember it. But the way classical Christian education works, starting at the beginning and then moving towards the end in a very linear, linear way, it's sensible. It sticks. For the first 12 years or so, when we were at, we added a grade every year. And so every year it was, well, what's the curriculum going to look like for that next grade? You know, how do we kind of put that next little block on top of the other blocks that we have down here at, at the base? There were growing pains in learning how to manage that many uh, students in a building or work with that many faculty on a staff. Um, I think we've, we've learned from our mistakes, hopefully, and, um, you know, expanded, grown where we, where we needed to grow. It's, it's different when you're just adding one grade per year, the things that you can plan or accomplish or even educate everybody about, as opposed to you kind of have all of that in place. You're not looking through new curriculum necessarily every year. Yes, you're bringing new, new teachers on board, but I feel like you can kind of go deep. I think that there is a greater, deeper understanding among the faculty about what uh, they need to do in their classroom. You know, we have teachers that are uh, equipped to, to integrate the subjects. And um, it's hard to do that when you're just kind of that first year that you've added a class. So I know as I talk to my own daughter uh, and I tell her about some of the things that we're doing now, she'll say, wow, well, I wish I was able to do that. You know, when I was at Morningstar, she, she thinks she got a great education, but I know that it's even better now. My hope for Morningstar is that it flourishes and I'm going to leave that up to God, whether that's a really big school by numbers. Uh, I think what matters the most to me is that we don't ever stray from that initial calling or plan, I would say, that God had for this school and that it is a classical Christian school. And I pray that families are drawn to that. Um, and if he blesses the school with 500 students, 10 years from now, that would be fabulous. But if he doesn't, and it's about the same as it is right now, but those families are here because they believe in classical Christian education and Morningstar is doing an excellent job in delivering that to them, then that would make me very, very happy. I think the ideal Morningstar graduate loves the Lord with all his or her soul, mind, and strength. Um, and hopefully they are engaged. I would hope that wherever God places them, uh, in the workplace, in their home, in their church, in their community, in, in government, in politics, that they are engaged, that they take what they have learned, the way they have learned to think, the way they have learned to wrestle with ideas and to always bring it back to how God wants that to be done, um, that they would be engaged. 
and hopefully they can do some small thing or maybe a great thing for the kingdom of, of God. I will miss it. I will miss the people. I will miss the students. Um, I know that God very clearly called me to do this. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I never had any intention of starting a school or didn't, wouldn't know where to begin. Um, but I feel confident that this is the time to pass the baton. I still want to be useful. I don't want to be a retiree who just does recreational things for the fun of it. Or I don't know however people spend their time when they retire. Yeah, no, I want to be, I want to be useful. I want to do something that uh, has eternal consequences. And uh, being a part of a Christian school certainly has eternal consequences. Thank you.